Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today we're going to talk about CD-based game systems, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, things like that. And we're going to talk about three specific things. First, we're going to talk about different file types for CD-based systems, such as bin and Q files, PBPs, CHDs, things like that. I'm also going to give suggestions on how to organize ROMs on your device. This is by no means going to be comprehensive, but I want to give you the tools to help you have success when it comes to organizing everything on your device. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to switch discs with multi-disc games. So that way, if you want to play a long multi-disc role-playing game, you'll have all the tools that you need in order to continue playing that game after you finish that first disc. Now this process will work for any CD-based system such as Sega CD, PlayStation 1, TurboGrafx CD, and Dreamcast. But today we're going to focus specifically on PlayStation 1. And this process will work for any number of systems, so anything that uses Emulation Station as a front-end and RetroArch as a back-end. So basically any of the RK3326 devices, your RG351 devices, your RGB10, the Odrake Go Advance and Super, and so on. Okay, so I'm really excited to jump into this, let's just do it. Okay, so let's start out by talking about all the different file systems that are available on a typical CD-based system. And again, we're focusing on PlayStation 1 here. So right off the bat, the most basic of them are going to be bin and queue files. You can see with this game called Ape Escape, it has this large file size here, and that's because all the data is stored on the bin file. The queue file itself is just a text file that basically tells the game when to use the specific bin file. So you can see here when you open up a queue file, it just shows some data about the bin file itself. Now theoretically, if you have a bin and queue file, you could actually just open up the bin file and it'll start the game, but I don't recommend you do that because there's going to be other games which are multi-disc games. You can see here with Battle Arena Toshin Den, it has multiple tracks associated with a single queue file. And that's because all these data files are chopped up into all these different bin files. So if you open up the queue file for this game, you can see that it has different bin files listed, and then it often has data which shows you when to start up that specific bin file. So my recommendation is don't mess with these files. Now along those same lines, if you have a multi-disc game like Final Fantasy VII, you're going to have multiple bin and queue files as well as an M3U file. And each of these discs are going to have their own bin and queue files. If you open up the queue file, you can see it actually points to that specific bin file. Now if you look at an M3U file, this basically organizes all of your queue files together. These are typically only used for multi-disc games, but I actually find these really helpful, and we're going to use more of these later. Finally, for PlayStation 1 in particular, it can use PBP files, and these are single files that can include multiple disks. These are some of the easiest to work with, but they're also not very easy to find. And there are other file types you can use, for example, CHD files, GDI files for Dreamcast and stuff, but for now we're just going to stick with this bin and queue format, and I wanted to highlight the PBP ones as well. So let me show you how to add them to your device. So you're going to want to go into the ROMs folder, whatever device you're using, open up your PlayStation 1 folder, and then just drag the files right in there. You don't want to use subfolders. For example, you don't want to give Final Fantasy VII its own folder, and then another one its own folder. That can often mess things up. What I recommend is you just throw them all into one single folder. It's going to look a little ugly, but really it doesn't matter because we're going to fix it up on the device itself. Don't worry, we're going to make it nice and pretty. Okay, so here I am putting my ROMs SD card back into my device and booting it up. And we're using 351 Elec as the example here. And as you can see, there are a bunch of duplicates, and that's because it's showing both the bin and the queue files. And even though you could navigate through all this, it's kind of a mess. So let me show you a really quick way to clean this up. You're going to want to hit Select when you're in the PlayStation menu, and then hit View Customization. Within here, go to the File Extension section, and then it's as simple as just unchecking the bin files. That means only the queue files and the other files are going to show up. So if we back up and go to the games list now, you can see it's much cleaner. Ape Escape, I mean Ape Escape and all the other ones now are much cleaner looking. The only one that has multiple entries is Final Fantasy VII. If you remember that had an M3U file and then three different Q files. And so because of that you see all of them. And unfortunately you can't just disable the Q files because then that's going to make the other regular bin Q files not show up at all. So it's mostly clean at this point, but it's still a little bit ugly. And we'll get into that later and how to fix this and make it perfect. For now, let's play around with multi-disc games. Let's start with Final Fantasy VII, and I'm going to boot the M3U file here, not the Q files, because the M3U file encompasses all the Q files, and that's the one we want. Now, when you start up RetroArch, you can see it actually says what disc is in the tray right there on the bottom. So what if we want to actually change the discs? It's pretty easy. You're going to go into the RetroArch Quick menu. In 351 Elect, that's hitting Select and the X button, and then navigate all the way down to Disk Control. 
Within this, think of it like a physical disk. You're going to want to eject the disk you have in there now, switch the disk number, and then insert the new disk. So we're going to do that right now, switching it from disk 1 to disk 2. I'm also going to go back into the quick menu, and I'm going to reset the game. So that way the game thinks that I'm starting up with disk 2 in the drive. Okay, so here we are trying to start up a new game using disk 2 in the drive, which as you know isn't going to work. And you can see here Final Fantasy VII is saying, please insert disk 1, because it thinks you have disk 2 in there. So go back to disk control now, eject disk 2, go and change it back to disk 1, and then insert disk 1. And just like on a physical PlayStation, it immediately notices that you've put in disk 1, and here we are, it starts up the game for you. And theoretically, this is exactly how you do it for any system. You basically tell it to eject a disk and then put in a new one. And it's a little complex to kind of wrap your head around the first time you do it, but after you get the hang of it, it's very easy and fun. And I kind of like the idea of just like doing these things virtually. So let's try it again using Final Fantasy IX. If you remember, this file is a PBP file, so all the disks are in one single file. But as you saw on the bottom, it still gives you the notification that disk 1 is in the tray. So let's go in here and let's swap it out with disk 2. Going back to disk control, we're going to eject the disk, change it to disk 2, re-insert the disk, and then I'm just going to hit restart again just to boot up the system to make you think that you're putting in disk 2, and there it goes. It says change to disk 1. So go back to disk control, eject the disk, put it back into disk 1, you know where this is going, and then you load it back again. And sure enough, the game starts up. So that's it. In a nutshell, this is how you change discs on PlayStation 1, Sega CD, Dreamcast, games like that. So now let's address the fact that we have multiple queue files showing up in our PlayStation menu. Now this you have to do separately from the system because the menu won't allow you to do it. But it's pretty easy, especially on 351 Elec. So the trick is even easier than you probably think. All you have to do is make M3U files for all of the games. So if you look at the M3U file again, you can see that it just has a listing of the queue files. So let's go ahead and make an M3U file for Ape Escape. All you have to do is right click anywhere in the folder and then select New Text Document. So now change the name to whatever you want it to show on the menu itself. I'm going to use apeescape.m3u. The most important thing here at this point is just to make sure it's an M3U file. You can actually name it whatever you want. Now go ahead and copy the name of the Q file that you want to launch. Then open up the M3U file and then just paste that name in there. And then hit save and you're done. Now it knows when you open an M3U file to open up the Q file. So let's do the same thing again with Battle Arena Toshin Den. Again, we're just going to make a copy of the M3U file we just made. I'm going to change the title of it to Battle Arena Toshin Den. I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to change the Q file to Battle Arena Toshin Den. You just have to make sure that this matches the Q file that you want to launch. And believe it or not, we're actually done at this point. We don't need to mess with the PvP file, and the other Final Fantasy VII already has an M3U file. So at this point, every PlayStation game in your library either has an M3U file or a PvP file. And it'll take a few minutes to make all the M3U files, but you only have to do this one time. And it's definitely worth it, and I'll show you why here. Let's go ahead and put the SD card back into our device. Launch it up, go to the PlayStation section, and then you might think, oh crap, you made it worse. Look at now, there's even more files, right? But there's a very easy fix to this too. Just go ahead and hit select. Go down to View Customization again, select File Extensions, and yep, you guessed it, we're going to unselect the Q files. We don't need them anymore because we have M3U files. So we're going to back out, back to our games list, and look at that. They're all there. So this is now only showing M3U files and PvP files. And then if you scrape everything, you're going to see the lovely box art, and it'll clean up the names for you and everything. So there we go, we have a perfectly working PlayStation 1 folder now. We have one entry per game, it's going to boot up into the multi-disc games as needed, but otherwise, for single-disc games, it's just going to work exactly like you would expect. Now ArcOS is a little bit more complex, so if you're using ArcOS, here's the quick guide for you. You're going to need to connect to your device through FTP, so you have to turn on your device, make sure it's connected to your network, and then make sure it has Enable Remote Services turned on in the Options menu. Then you're going to want to type in the IP address of your device, which you can find under the Network Info settings. And then username is going to be ARC, password is going to be ARC. This is the main folder here. You want to go up to the root folder here, and then within here go to etc. Then go to emulation station, and then essystems.config. 
Open that up and you're going to find all of the different systems that are supported within Emulation Station on Arc OS. And it's going to show you all the different file types that it looks for in the menus. So what we're going to do is hit Control F to do a find in page. And then I'm going to type in PlayStation to find PlayStation quickly. And here you go. Here's a list of all the file types that Emulation Station looks for in Arc OS. And as you can see here, it has M3U files. It also has all sorts of other files. You can see there are zip files and CHD files and everything else. So what we want to do is just delete the Q files from this. That way you're not going to see the extra files when you're navigating through your menu. And as you probably noticed, the bin files are already hidden as well. So really that's it when it comes to ArcOS. You just need to hide them or add them specifically in this one configuration file. And you have to do it via Wi-Fi FTP. But again, you only have to do this one time, so it's pretty easy. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to give you a quick breakdown on how all of this stuff works with disk-based systems. This is one of the most common problem areas when it comes to PlayStation 1, but it can also be kind of a pain when it comes to Dreamcast. Sega CD only has a couple multi-disc games, so it's not that big of a problem. But either way, I hope I've given you the tools to help you along the way. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments about this, but I specifically did not include CHD files in this tutorial. And that's for a couple reasons, but the main one is that CHD files, with Dreamcast in particular, can often slow down the game. I actually really like using them because they save on file space, but converting over bin and Q files to CHD is a whole nother level, and we'll do that in a later tutorial. So if you're interested in learning how to make CHD files, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to take it into consideration. As always, thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!